As an Orlando native, as a member of the LGBTQ community in Orlando, as someone who works across the street from the Pulse nightclub, as someone who lost eight classmates, um, I really wanted to make sure that I uh, wrote something and presented something from Orlando for you guys. CNN said at first, no one heard the gunfire. And how can you blame them when you've been a moving target since you could first walk, let alone dance? Bullets are the default soundtrack you stop noticing. A background noise of rhythm we knew as early as our mother's heartbeat. When the blood pumped through her veins and nourished ours in the process. The steady beat of war drums echoing in the womb. A call to arms as if for nine months our mother's flesh wrapped round us like a fallout shelter. Throbbing prophecies in Morse code. We were born into a battlefield. Swaddled in contradictions and conditional love. Middle school is trial by combat. First blood, always drawn by friendly fire. When you walk past the boy on the street you've known since you were nine, his whistle slices through the air like bombs over an unsuspecting city. Four feet in front of him, he calls you sexy mama. Four feet past, he reloads and with a hair trigger shoots dyke at your back. Your ears grow accustomed to the machine gun rattle of queer, 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 queer. You stop flinching every time faggot whizzes past your ear and whips up the dust around you, gunpowder sears your nostrils till you can't even smell it anymore. It never gets any safer, but the novelty wears off like explosions in a Michael Bay film. Maybe they didn't hear the gunfire because we were born into the trenches on the front lines of a war people pretend is over. But no matter what ceasefires or treaties say, homophobes will always take up arms for a cold war and stockpile their weaponry. And I know they said don't make this a political issue, I'm sorry, it's just that we're not running from politics, we're running from actual bullets. And we still storm the beaches of Normandy every time we use a public restroom, still hopscotch over landmines every time we order flowers or a cake for a wedding whose license the county clerk won't even sign in an office that goes so quiet you could hear a grenade pin drop. There is no way to quantify the volume of silence in a room full of people who hate you. No neutral zones or safe spaces in a world that says the most important part of you is a lifestyle choice. So you say, screw it, bare your back like a bullseye and dare them to shoot. You wrap yourself in the grinding base like Kevlar, never camouflage, pelvic thrust like an upraised middle finger. You grow joy in places you didn't know joy could live, like the shimmy of your shoulders and sway of your hips. You dance like a devil and an angel. Salvation and damnation in the same slow grind go so hard, you don't know if you're sprouting wings or losing them so hard, you can't tell if you're falling or flying, but either way, it never feels like leaving. It feels like coming home. They said at first no one heard the gunfire, but when you're born a moving target, you learn to throw your hands up, roll serpentine, and leave the rest to God. Maybe that night they weren't an ear, trained toward the unending drums of war. They were just a pair of hips, a pumping fist, heat and friction, and the strobe lights of joy, beat, free, rhythm, laugh, bass, love, pulse. You were too bright for gunpowder and mushroom clouds, too loud for the drop of spent shells, too big to stuff back inside the closet in a world that wanted to wound you. There you were, dancing like no one's ever called you faggot, loving like you've never been hurt before. They said at first no one heard the gunfire, but the sound of war is so complete it leaves no room for fear, just pride. And when the world gave you a battlefield, you went and made it your dance floor.